social research psychologists found here that the overall format, whether the show was set in the 21st century or the 24th, was basic patterns of good guys versus bad men. Good guys versus bad men, that's the words they used, with up-to-date scientific and mechanical trapping. Note that it said bad men, not bad guys. The good guys, interestingly, were found to be all young men in their 20s organized as a group with very strong team loyalty. Now, with the said in communism, don't trust anybody over 30, then they dropped it. Because they had to separate the generations. Because the older generations would contaminate the younger with old think of morality. So the good guys were interested and were found to be all young men in their 20s, organized as a group, not an individual, but as a group, with a very strong team loyalty. The leader was pictured as a sort of older brother, not a father symbol. And the villains or cowards were all older men who might be symbolic or father figures. They were either bad or weak. Much of this fear might be construed as being anti-parent, sniping, offering children an exhilarating and safe way to work off their grudges against their parents. To children, the report explained adults are a ruling class against which they cannot successfully revolt. And the UN has used terms like that as well in the rights of the child. We're back with more after the following messages. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and we're cutting through the matrix showing you some of the techniques that are used and have been used and are actually more advanced and all pervasive today. Talking about how they decide to do the psycho-seduction of children. The report confided some pointers to TV producers for keeping parents pacified. In other words, the parents are watching the television and the ads, etc., that were geared at the children. They had to find a way to pacify the parents so they wouldn't get upset. It says one way suggested was to take the parent's side in such easy, thoughtful ways as having a character on television admonish Junior to clean his plate. And at the same time, of course, what they're doing is trying to get Junior to want what he sees in the ad. But as long as the father sees the character on the ad, the father figure, admonishing the child on TV, he feels that he's still in control. So when Junior then asks him for the toy, he'll, he'll say in an authoritative way, well, I, I guess so, you know, but to clean your plate. Simple, simple stuff like that gets around, gets around you. It's a tool, it's a weapon, actually. Television is an incredible weapon. They actually called the children that they were studying, by the way, or the groups that were targeting back in the 50s, Moppets. Not Muppets, but Moppets. So this is where the term came from. To some of the United States product makers evidently solicit the favor of Moppets by building aggressive outlets right into their products. Public Relations Council and motivational enthusiast E.L. Bernays was reported as 13 in 54 that the most successful breakfast cereals were, build, were building crunch into their appeal to appease hostility by giving outlet to aggressive and other feelings. How many parents got driven nuts with the sound of the, when, when the little Johnny was being a bit aggressive and showing his hostility? This is all understood by the guys who made it more crunchy. This is one aspect of the juvenile merchandising that intrigued the depth of manipulation was a craze or fad that also talks about fashions. And actually, there's a good section here called the feminization of the male. See, the old, the, the, the inward type man, the old type that took his values from his previous generations and was individualistic, didn't really care much about dressing in the 19, early 1950s. So they went to work to try to change him, to create a sort of peer group image so he'd have to keep up and join the big group. That's how psychology works, in all directions at the same time make you belong and they trained the females they advertised at the females to do the shopping for their husband to bypass his objections to all the, the new clothes and the new fads the strange colours and all the rest of it that they're going to bring into vogue that's the power of advertising so here's the man being devalued in cartoons on television serials and, and puppet shows 
in common use. And these advertisers knowing exactly what they're doing. Because the child also sees, well, my mum even shops and, and picks things from my dad. He's got no sort say in anything. He's irrelevant. I remember the movie, it was called American Beauty, which portrayed a lot of this in the actual movie, at least the outcome of this in the movie, where the daughter watches the mother, who's no respect whatsoever for the husband, and becomes the same herself, and actually asks a guy, as a boyfriend, to kill the father. That's how much is gone. It's gone further than that, even, into other areas. Well, that's it for tonight. So from Hamish and myself, in a very cold interior of Canada, it's good night. May your God or your gods go with you.